Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about Nabara Linux, the Fedora based distribution. Before we get into that, just want to thank you for checking out my channel, all the support and the new subscribers. I really do appreciate it. Don't want to waste any of your time, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So, like I said, we're going to be talking about Nabara. And if you followed me for a bit of time, you probably realize that I'm a really big Manjaro fan. That was one of the distributions I've spent most of my time on. I've used basically all of them over the course of time since I was a kid. But uh, Manjaro was the one that I always kept gravitating back towards to. And mainly that was just because Manjaro tended to work for me. I got all the latest packages. You know, I was always on the latest kernel. It was easy to switch to different kernels. Um, I just really gravitated towards it for some reason. But then when Fedora 37 came out, I saw a lot of people talking about it and that they were really enjoying Fedora. And Fedora's been around for a long time. I've used it way back in the past years ago, but never touched it again since. A lot like Linux Mint. I used it a long time ago. Haven't really touched it again since. So I wanted to try out Fedora and I'd been running Fedora in a virtual machine just to try it out to see what it was like and whether I really wanted to install this on my main system or not. So after messing around with it for a while, I decided to drop Manjaro on my main machine, the one that we're on right now, and switch over to Fedora 37. Things were great until I went to go make a YouTube video and my sound was all like clipping and, and skipping and staticky for some reason. I tried a bunch of different stuff um, and I just couldn't get past it. So I was about to switch back to Manjaro and then I saw some people post some videos about Nabara. And I saw it was based on Fedora 37. It had some optimizations for OBS Studio, mainly targeted towards gamers, it seems. And I'm not too big of a gamer, but I decided I would try it out. So I installed it. And let me tell you, I was pleasantly surprised with Nabara. I like, I love this distribution. I would never consider going back to Manjaro after spending about a week so far on Nabara. And I, I just, there's nothing bad I can really say about it. Uh, granted, I don't use every part of the Linux system and I don't play a ton of games, but I have done a little bit of gaming, but probably not the way most of you game. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and just my impressions, what I like about Nobara. So one of the first things that I like is the flat pack support. I love flat packs. Um, I love that they, they turn on all the fusion uh, repos for you. You're not having to do that. Those are typically things that you would enable after installing Fedora. And another thing that I was met with in a first impression was the welcome screen. So a lot like some of the other distributions, you know, they give you a welcome screen after you log into the system the first time. Manjaro does that. Other ones do that too. But this one um, pulled up here. Or maybe I already have it pulled up. Here it is. So this is what you see after you first install it. Uh, so you get the welcome screen. You get some first steps, which when you launch this update system, it updates everything. So, you know, all your Fedora packages, flat packs, it goes through all that. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop. And you can run this uh, update my system again from the menu. You don't have to come back to this welcome screen. Uh, but then you also get the option to install the media codecs, which most people are going to install, especially on a Fedora-based distribution. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're met here with this option to launch that. I don't have one, so I don't have any experience. But from what I've read from other people, this has worked really well for them. And it's one of the reasons that they like Navara. And then, of course, you have the software center. And they actually have their own software center, which I'll show you here in a moment. And then they had some recommendations, you know, like Blender, Caden Live, which of course I installed Caden Live differently. I didn't install it from here. I'm not sure what all improvements they made because I know that some of these apps they've they've kind of altered them a little bit, like OBS Studio, which I did install from here, and Discord. I installed it from here too. And then you have some optional steps like the AMD drivers. 
and this uh the drivers for the xbox one and xbox series controllers which i did install and then of course the the proton packages which i did install some of those as well however i haven't have really tried them out because again i'm not a big gamer but that's there for you and the guy who develops this uh glorious egg roll he's actually a developer for red hat and he works on wine and proton and, and other projects so he's really invested in this ecosystem so i really don't feel like this distribution is going to disappear i feel like it does bring something unique uh, because of the type of developer he is and how invested he is in this community and what he's trying to do here with this distribution and of course you got the look and feel where you can easily change stuff like your login manager and your theme layout etc and there's some troubleshooting information that take you to various web pages and they have a discord server and they have a subreddit here that they're linked to as well and then of course you can contribute to their patreon and other areas as well so this welcome screen i really liked it it really made things uh, easy to get set up with so i mentioned that package manager so if we go to the menu here we can pull up this Nobara package manager and in this package manager uh, you can install packages from the fedora repos and from the fusion repos and then flat packs I, tr I tried messing around with this maybe i'm just not doing it right but if you type something in here i would have expected that you were able to install so i'm not sure what exactly you're supposed to do here maybe i'm just dumb so i just installed the flat packs that i wanted to install from the command line like i normally would it was no big deal but that's there uh so this is pretty cool you know what you can do is i haven't used the actual uh gnome software center since i've used this it's there you could use it but i haven't had to i've done everything i need to do from here in the navarro one which is really nice and one of the other things that i noticed um is that the system seems snappier and i tell you i hate uh, gnome i've never liked it i always go to kde or xfce or something like that i've even used the i3 window manager anything but gnome but since being on the borrow they have a few different versions there's a kde version and there's a vanilla gnome ver a gnome version and then there's their spin on gnome with their tweaks and changes which is what you're looking at here with the arc menu and the dash to panel and stuff like that which is already there by default and i'm not a big customizer i don't like to spend a ton of time customizing my distribution i i just don't i know a lot of people do and i know that's what a lot of people like linux for is all the customization i might make a few tweaks here and there but overall i don't change much and i don't want to spend time doing it and with nobara i never felt the urge to really change a whole lot so this is pretty much the way that it comes is the way that you're looking at it right now and um the kernel uh, you know, a lot of times with with other distros, like you get on Ubuntu and you end up on an older kernel, you got older software sometimes, depending on which version of Ubuntu you installed. But you can see that just the other day, I got the update to the 6.2 kernel, which was great because I like to stay, you know, up to date. I don't want to be running on old stuff, which is why I liked Manjaro so much. But, you know, Fedora 37 and Nabara kind of feed that need for me plus give me stability i always had issues with dual monitors on manjaro from time to time i haven't experienced any of those issues since being on the borrow and i like it uh, I, I just i can't explain to you how much that i really enjoy this distribution out of all of them if you haven't tried it yet you really should now as far as gaming goes like i said i'm not a big gamer but my kids they have uh, xbox uh ultimate the game pass thing and you can do the cloud gaming so i've been using the cloud gaming to play a few games and you can install the flat pack uh for this package this xbox cloud gaming package and when you run this uh the first thing you need to do is, is if you have a controller from what i found i'm using the xbox wireless controller you need to connect that first which you can install those packages from that nabara welcome screen you install those packages and then get your wireless controller connected through Bluetooth first. 
which was very easy to do. Just hit the, don't turn the controller on, just hit the sync button and it'll show up in your Bluetooth menu and you can connect it. If you don't connect the controller first, then uh, once, you, once you launch this cloud gaming app, it won't be recognized. So you have to close out of the cloud gaming app, connect your controller, and then open the cloud gaming app back up. Uh, that was just one odd thing that I found with it. I'm not sure why it works that way. Another thing with this particular app is that it doesn't keep your screen from going to sleep. So I installed the caffeine uh, GNOME extension and then set it to trigger uh, caffeine to be enabled whenever this cloud gaming app is running. Otherwise, my screen kept going to sleep and I'd have to keep moving the mouse to keep the screen awake. But this is the only gaming that I've done on it so far is through this, which doesn't really probably take advantage of a lot of the things that that Nobara has to offer and the tweaks that they made, but still, nonetheless, connecting my Xbox controller was super easy. Getting this app installed from Flatpak was easy. Just everything's been easy so far. All my apps, OBS, Caden, Live, uh, VS Code, Microsoft Edge, uh, my ExpressVPN, just everything has been very easy on this distribution. I've had zero issues so far. So if you've tried out Nobara, let me know down in the comments how you felt about it. If there's another distribution you think I should try out. I don't really do distro reviews, but I just felt like I need to tell you guys about this because I've had such a great experience with it. And I know a lot of you might be on Manjaro or other distributions looking for something different. And Nobaro is definitely that. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like this content, my channel, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Everybody have a great day, and I'll see you next time.